to another how-to video. Now we're going to show you the V6 and the V6 GT innovative new mounting bracket. First, this is the entire unit. This one bracket is compatible with Intel 775, 1156, and 1366. It has simple adjustments on the top and the bottom to allow for universal compatibility. So this is the universal bracket for the V6 and the V6 GT. This is the Intel uh, supporting top mount. So you can see uh, that we've adjusted this to 1366 and it's adjustable to 1156 and 775. 775 is closest to the CPU socket and 1366 is farthest away. For purposes of example, we have adjusted the sides differently to see, show you that uh, one bracket can be used for 775 or 1366. But it is very important to know that when you're assembling the CPU and the CPU cooler, that all of the slots must be in the same location for 1366 or depending on the socket you use. This is the universal Intel black backplate. This backplate is used for AMD and Intel solutions. For the Intel solution, you can see that there's anti-conductive, non-conductive tape on all of the four ends. This is the side that will face the motherboard. As you can see earlier, we adjusted the screws on the top and the front to support 775 screws. Now, in order to assemble this cooler, we have to take it from the beginning. The first thing you want to do with the V6 or the V6 GT is to remove the fan clips. When you open up the V6 or V6 GT accessory kit, you'll find the Intel retention plate. And it'll be just as this piece right is here, not adjusted. To adjust the Intel retention bracket, all you have to do is remove this screw and adjust this pin. Both the screw and the pin have to be parallel with the Intel retention bracket. So I'm going to use the 1366 mounting hole and I'm going to remove the current configuration, which is 1156. So you can see, now I'm in the 1366 mounting location, both for the pin and for the screw hole. So once I have one of the sides adjusted for 1366, I will have to do the same thing for the screws on each of the four corners of the Intel retention bracket this corner and the other two corners. But for example, we're going to move towards attaching the universal backplate behind the motherboard. This is what the universal backplate behind the motherboard will look like. All you need to do is insert the screws behind the motherboard, making sure that both the top and the bottom back bracket line up to the corresponding hole. The 1156 is in the middle, the 775 is at the closest end, and the largest slot is for 1366. You have to tighten in the bracket from the back using these handy screws on each of the four corners. Once the top plate of the Intel retention bracket is screwed into the motherboard and the back plate, it should look like this from the back side. To install on a real system, this is how the finalized Intel retention bracket should look. Notice that the screws, the screw hole for the top 
spring clip bracket has to adjust at the closest position. So this hole will always be closest to the CPU socket. After we've assembled the Intel brackets and adjusted them correctly and installed them on the motherboard, it's now time to install the V6 or V6 GT CPU cooler. The first thing you'll want to do is, of course, remove the fans, which we've already done. And the second thing, you'll need to install uh, some thermal paste. So assuming you put a small application of thermal paste here, we're going to place the CPU cooler over the socket to see how it sits. The V6 and V6 GT have a double manifold heat pipe. The air has to blow into the V, whether it's positioned forward to back or top to bottom, the air intake has to blow into the V and out the narrow part of the V. In this situation, we're blowing out, so the V6 GT is correctly aligned with the Cooler Master logo upright. Now we're going to use the bracket with spring screws to install the V6 GT cooler. You place the bracket through the center of the chassis. You adjust both sides so the screws fit, and then you tighten both. You can either use the hex key or your fingers to gently tighten the springs. Once it's at appropriate tightness, all you need to do now is to install the fans. So, once you've tightened the bracket with spring screws to the proper tightness, now it's time to install the fans. These fans have anti-vibration pads on each of the corners that allow for a screw-free yet noise-free installation. All you have to do is reinstall them by snapping them back onto the frame. In this how-to video, we've shown you how to manipulate and install the V6 and V6GT universal heatsink kit. We've shown you how to adjust the top Intel retention plate. We've shown you how to use the universal back plate and the pressure bracket with spring screws. So you can see all of this and more information at www.coolermaster.com or cmhd.tv.